Well, when we first were looking here in Ormond Beach, we came down to visit friends that lived in Plantation Bay, and they took us for a ride. And when she took us down the loop, I said to myself, this is where I want to live. And um, we went back home that weekend, and we put a deposit down, and we built our house. I live on the river, so uh, the river's a big influence. Water's a big influence to me. Um, I hike a lot, I kayak. Um, I've just always loved nature, and I like that sense of place and, um, and that tradition of landscape. Like it's when I sold a print that I had created of a girl. She was standing on the back of a train and holding her heart, and it was inspired by the E.E. E. Cummings quote, I carry your heart with me, I carry it in my heart. And I received an email from the woman who bought it, and she said her husband was a train conductor, and he had passed away a month before, and she purchased my artwork as a memory of him. And that was the moment that I really knew why I was creating art, and it was for other people. All of my work uh, comes from where I've been and some of it from where I've been a long period of time. Um, so that, that I know what those locations are like. I've got sketchbooks over here that are just full of sketches. So I don't copy and I don't use much in the way of photographs at all. It has to be places where I've been that gives me a feeling. You know, you have to have that feeling what that, that is. Every, everything inspires me. That I have to I have to edit. <laughs> I have that's why my studio looks the way it does. I have too many inspirations to be honest with you. I hope that everyone can find their way to the arts in some form. It's, it's what keeps us going. When we stop and think, everything around us is art. Everything, the graphic artists, the football uniforms, everything is art and design and architecture. It's, it's amazing when you think about it. been here in the community, enjoying the community since 1986, and my experiences here are nothing but positive. The local artists here are dedicated, professional, extremely talented in just every aspect of the arts. The art community has grown, I think the art uh, venues have grown, and I think there's a lot more uh, offerings, art offerings now than they were back in uh, the early 80s. I have expensive brushes, uh, but some of my best brushes are just cheap kids' brushes that the hairs have a tendency to fall out and things of that nature. But you can get in there, you can dab with them, you can scrub with them, and can't live without them. I think the gratification for me comes from uh, just being in a place, just, just trying to create a memory for myself. While I enjoy the work, I also enjoy the experience. My old historic uh, antique wood toolbox behind me, it's got my chisels in. I'd have to include the whole toolbox over any power tools. I could do without any of my power tools and just go back to just that toolbox and make something work.
Ormond Main Street is a very important part of growing a downtown. We're part of a Main Street community. We're also part of a Florida Main Street community and part of a national Main Street community. And that whole focus is about putting cultural amenities, economic amenities, civic amenities back into downtowns. Main Street also is very involved in trying to bring artists into the district as part of its event schedule and its um, interaction with the businesses. So we encourage businesses to bring art into their uh, four walls. have to make it. I, I mean, it's, I guess it's my Xanax or something. I don't know. I, it's the, it's just therapy for me. It's everything. And I enjoy it so much. Actually, if you're a really serious artist, it's something you really need to do. And I need to do it on a continuing basis. And I, I like to get my work out in the public, but I'm not as concerned about that as I am about producing it. Well, I keep doing artwork because it is so much a part of me that I can't stop. It's something that um, gives me uh, pleasure, happiness, comfort, and all the things that um, really help at the end of the day to uh, heal your soul. I think the arts uh, influences uh, uh, community pride. It certainly introduces beauty, culture, uh, all of the positive values that uh, are associated with a sophisticated uh, community uh, helps us focus on the positive aspects of life and the joys that fine art uh, brings to the to the observer. It's it's got so much potential, and there's so much appreciation for fine art in Ormond Beach. I always stop before it's finished so that uh, you don't want to overwork anything ever and better to stop and kind of take a look at it and see if you need to add anything. Sometimes just one mark will finish the painting So because you want it fresh. And they tell me when they're done, I don't tell them. I think the only way you can know something's finished is if you know exactly what it's supposed to look like in the first place and you have that precise process to achieve it. And I wouldn't want to do that, it would totally bore me. I like that prospect of potential failure hanging over me. I just feel it. I just sense, you know, I've done, I can't, I haven't any more creative ideas on how to do it. It's, you know, sometimes they're big portfolios, sometimes they're small. Just having the need for it for myself, really, just wanting to build something, a place where you could go and just create art and everything that involves art. And then just the business growing, the need from the community to have events really, to have a place to go, to see and be around art. I keep breaking pieces till I get it done. Uh, 
I wish it was more complex than that, but um, I have lots of wood. And uh, like with any experiment, you go through and try something that you think will work, and if it doesn't, you try something else. I just get my materials out, and most of the times so I don't even sketch anything. I just let the paint dictate to me. When I'm working with watercolor, I work very wet, and the watercolor spreads around the paper, and that excites me. And um, I'll see shapes, I'll let it dry, and then I'll go back and define the shapes. Before I begin, I, I, I'm always gathering information. Um, sketches, I carry a sketchbook around with me. I don't have my pencil in my pocket. I always have a mechanical pencil. I'm always drawing, uh, making notes. A lot of, I do a lot of writing. So I, I, I'll make a study outdoors, and I, don't, I should have a sketchbook with me, but um, I'll paint in that. I'll paint little color notes in there. I'll do these plein air paintings like over there on the wall, and um, just all the time. I may not use that specifically for a painting, but I'm just gathering information, sensory information. We are so fortunate because along with being an art museum, we're surrounded by this beautiful garden area. We like to call it an urban oasis because it really is like a secret garden. From the outside, from the street, you don't really know what's inside the garden. But once you get in the gardens, it's so tranquil. We have water features. We have ponds with turtles. We have a waterfall. We have uh, wonderful native plants that have been there for decades and decades. Ormond is such a special place because most of us choose to live here. We've selected it and we choose to live here. And so we have a very, we may have a laid back beach town vibe, but the arts are very important in Ormond Beach. Um, the city promotes the arts. We have the Performing Arts Center. It was a first or second, usually Thursday in May, and uh, the kids, alumni, um, teachers would put artwork in and uh, the whole school would come out and it's like a festival event. There was music, there was food, and the artwork, of course, and it was just spectacular. And we've continued ever since, and it's just a, a wonderful annual event that we're so proud of. And we're lucky enough that the museum allows us every other year to exhibit there as well. Tradewinds is an art show put on by Seabreeze High School by the teachers and students. And it's a great experience for all the students because everyone, no matter who you are or what grade you're in or what level of art you can do, has a chance to put their art in the show and show it to the entire school as well as the entire community. And there are winners, of course, and you know, best in show and whatnot, and they get the honor that they deserve. The arts in um, high school, in my opinion, are very important. And in a lot of places, we're losing them unfortunately, due to budget cuts and that type of thing. And this program's a really strong tool for maintaining the community's involvement and support for young art. The museum has a long relationship with the local high school, Seabreeze High School. Um, the art students there had been showing their work at the school. Occasionally the, the work would be shown off campus. And in 1996, we partnered with the school to bring the work here. So every other year in the spring, everyone from freshmen through seniors get to show their work here on the walls of the museum. It's hung, it's lit professionally, and then they get to come to an opening and see the public view their work. Um, it's a program that we really enjoy because, first of all, many of the students aren't strangers to us. They've started with our art classes as kids, come through summer art camp, and maybe they aged out after age 12. They've come back and volunteered and helped at art camp. So they've always kind of been associated with the museum, but the one thing they've never done is seen their work on the walls. So uh, Tradewinds gives us a chance to see what young people are doing and also see their reactions. I try to include everything that um, has some value or merit in there, um, but I don't include everything, that the, every student's piece in there. It has to have some type of merit. And then I jury it again before it goes to the museum. 
and uh, make sure that it's something that uh, we're proud of that represents our school and our department. Some of it, not all of it. Um, I'm heading in that direction. I, I would like to be known for something. This uh, segmented thing is one of the things that I came up with that um, someone else had been doing 20 years before and I didn't find that out until I was three or four years into developing the idea. Um, so I, I kind of reinvented this stave segmenting. So um, yes, there are things that, that would be identifiable, but a bowl is pretty much a bowl. I think I have a recognizable style over the years. Um, I, it's always landscape. So, I mean, that's, I haven't, I used to, when I did watercolors, I did a lot of figures. Um, I, these are all, you know, landscape. Uh, there's trees, there's um, horizon lines, you know, you, you have to look sometimes to find them, but they're there. And they're buried under the colors. The themes are, um, you know, my childhood memories, the old toys, books dolls, um, things like that. So I guess that's the theme. Especially when I paint the human form or even the birds, um, I've noticed over time that I tend to take um, a victim viewpoint. I guess the theme of vulnerability would fit. The arts in Ormond Beach uh, dramatically affect the quality of life. Uh, we have a beautiful little museum. Uh, we have the Rockefeller Park. Uh, we have many other areas. We have the Ormond Beach Performing Arts Center. And all of these together create the, the, the culture of art in our community. I'm, I'm all over the map on that. I'm not a regimented person at all. So I sometimes I paint in the afternoon, sometimes I paint at night, sometimes I paint in the morning. It all depends. Um, but I, I, um, I just let the day take me wherever, what, it's just nothing's planned. No, it's random. I'm very random. Just getting to the easel or just drawing, it's because it's different. I figure if I'm drawing or writing, or painting, I'm moving forward. Um, I don't have, I'm not really morning even, I'm, I've got a lot of energy, so I, I'm, could be any time, could be five in the morning, it could be 10 at night, it's just, I work, I try to work every day, paint every day. Early morning, um, and I usually have two, three paintings going at a time. Though when I start to get close to the finish, then I tend to finish one of them to the other one sitting by the wayside. I, I usually work one painting at a time. Yeah, and um, although my thoughts are always, you know, turning on to what the next painting is going to be. Um, yes, but one painting at a time. Share my art is a very important part of what I do. I, ha I've, I have this feeling that if I don't have artwork out there, that they're going to forget all about me. I believe the process of drawing and painting is um, the most satisfying to me. Not everything gets framed in the end, um, though that is pretty exciting too sometimes. Because art affects everybody. Um, as an art educator at the museum, I've seen people who aren't artists come into class and leave feeling better. Um, it has the power to say things that we can't say with spoken language, so it really does connect everybody. I find that the more people that come in, 
with that person who's looking for a painting, the harder it is because they'd be better off generally being by themselves and getting what they want and what they like. I think what I try most of all to do is to create something that's going to cause people to want to get up out of the sofa and walk up and look at it. I don't put eyes on any of my uh, drawings, or I mean any of my carvings, because I don't want people to look into something's eyes and try to say, oh, you know, isn't that cute or isn't that, you know, so mysterious. I want them to realize there's something lost. It's the journey, it's the working through. That's because there isn't an idea to start with. There's just an empty canvas and paint, and you start. You put color on, and then you just keep going from there and hope to discover something. Mm -hmm.